freezing your ass off, sweating your ass off, constipation, blisters on your feet, mosquitoes, hunger, horrible food, sopping wet from the rain. Some of the things that sucked in the military are going to be the same things that are going to suck in an SHTF survival scenario. Here are eight things that I learned in the military to help keep your spirits high when things get really sucky. Hey, what's up, Warriors? It is Jeff from WarriorLife.com. And look, when I was in the military, there were lots of sucky times. Whether it's being in a combat zone or whether it's being on an unaccompanied tour with your family back home and you're some, someplace overseas, or something just being out in the field and just being really sucky weather and you're sopping wet and you're freezing your ass off. You had to find lots of little ways to be able to bring your spirits up. Little things that would help you maintain just your composure and being able to make good operational decisions under the stress of the environment that you are in. Well, the same thing is going to be happening to you in any sort of an SHTF type survival scenario where you're gonna be under more stress, you're gonna to have to make potentially even life-saving decisions for you and your family. And so let me give you some of the little tips that we learned along the way just to be able to keep our spirits high. But tip number one is to stay dry and warm. I can tell you that some of the suckiest times that I had in the military was when I was just soaked to the bone and in freezing cold rain, trying to get uh, sleep at night and just chattering teeth, right? In fact, I spoke with Les Stroud, who is Survivor Man, and one of the things he said was that the very first thing he does when he goes, and he's in a survival scenario, is he makes a fire. There's something about a fire and being warm and being dry and just the crackling of the fire that helps soothe the soul and gives you a better spirit out there. So you always wanna make sure that you have the right gear to be able to stay dry and warm. Pain is another obvious mood killer out there. So one thing you want to do is make sure that you do have a good backpack, a good bug out bag, good clothing and shoes that are going to help you to maintain comfort while you're walking long distances or you have to travel with your gear somewhere. You also want to have things that are going to help take away the pain when you have that. So that could be pain medication like Motrin or it could be things for your feet as well, such as uh, moleskin or other blister type first aid care that you can use if you do start getting blisters and have bad feet. Tip number three is to stay hydrated. Research has linked dehydration to both anxiety and depression. And they also found that no matter how much water intake you're normally used to having, increasing your water intake actually makes you happier. Now, in a survival situation, that can be kind of a tough task, right? So you wanna make sure that you do have a water filtration system that's gonna allow you to take found water out there and be able to make it drinkable. Now, especially if you have family members, young family members that don't like to drink water, also having something that you can add to the water to make it taste better, whether that's Kool-Aid or I like Pedialyte or these liquid IV packets that give a taste to the water. They're, they're kind of like Kool-Aid packets, but they have electrolytes in them as well. So that's gonna help bring your mood up also. I can tell you from living off of MREs for an extended period of time that crappy food just makes you feel crappy. In fact, even the military realized that a hot warm meal lifted soldiers' spirits, which is why they put heating packets inside of the MRE so that soldiers did have a way to heat up their entree packets in there. Now for you, that means having some sort of a, a bug out stove or something that you can cook food outside of your home if you are in a forced evacuation scenario so that you can have a hot meal. But also, survival foods come quite a ways. It's a lot tastier these days and a lot more nutritious as well to be able to give you those things that your brain's gonna need to be able to maintain operational readiness, if you will. Now, for this food that still does suck out there, that was one of the reasons why the military also started putting Tabasco inside of the MREs to make crappy food just taste a little bit better. Let's just, let's just kill those taste buds and just numb them out and so that the food will taste better, right? All right, for the fifth tip, anytime that there was downtime, you could always find guys in the back of the track or in the tent playing card games. Now, ever since we were young, we associate playing games with being happy and feeling good. And the same thing is gonna go for a survival scenario. So, especially if you have children and having games available for them, that's gonna keep their mind off of the situation that you're all in. For you, I recommend that you have a set of playing cards in your bug out bag because there are so many different games you can get out of just one single deck of cards. Now, one thing you can do here as double duty is that you can have survival playing cards. There's a bunch of them out there that have little tips on them. Most of them are just kind of vanilla. Personally, I like the urban survival playing cards. They have lots of really kind of advanced tips on there. They're really good tips on there. So it also gives you a reference for different survival strategies that you can use as well. 
Now, I'm sure those of you who have never even been in the military before have seen images of soldiers who are running for physical training in tight formation singing cadence songs. Now that cadence is there to help keep us all in step so that we're not tripping all over one another, but it's also there to help us keep our minds off of our aching feet and our legs and our lungs that are ready to explode. So for you, we know that music does help lift our spirits up. So I recommend that you do have for your smartphone or an MP3 player, you have downloaded some up uplifting music that you can carry with you. Now, in a survival situation, you might not have electricity. So I also recommend that you do have some sort of a solar charger that's portable that is gonna help you continuously charge up your MP3 player or your smartphone so that you can continue to listen to that music. Now there's no discounting the power of religious faith during hard times to help keep your spirits up if you are a person of faith. So I do recommend that you do have a religious text for whatever you follow, whether that's the Bible or some other religious text, that you can turn to during times when things get really hard. Now one thing I do recommend here though, is that you download it as an audiobook and put it on an MP3 player or onto your smartphone. That's gonna allow you to be able to read that book even if you don't have light available to you, so you can actually just listen to it. You can listen to it while you're walking, while you're traveling, so that's gonna be a big benefit for you as well. The other advantage of that is even if you aren't a person of faith, you can download multiple books onto an MP3 player or your smartphone instead of having to try to lug around an entire library inside of your bug out bag. And finally, one of the most critical factors when it comes to keeping your spirits high is getting good quality sleep. Now there was a military study that was done at Walter Reed Hospital that found that soldiers that operated with five hours or less sleep for 20 days were functioning at only 29% of their normal operational capacity. Now in 10th Mountain Division, we did a study also where we went five days with zero hours sleep, literally 24 hours a day, small missions for five days with no sleep. And what we found was a strong degradation of operational readiness of the soldiers that took part in the study, soldiers that were just ready to quit at a moment's notice, but we also noticed bad decision-making skills when it came to the missions themselves. So for you, you need to keep your wits about, you need to make good decisions, potentially life-saving decisions in an SHTF scenario. So you wanna make sure that you have good environment to get good sleep, you're dry, you're warm, you've got good shelter. Also that you don't have to remain hyper-vigilant. So you have other members of your team that can stand watch when it comes to looking out for critters or other threats that might be out there, right? But one of the biggest threats you have are literally just mosquitoes. It's one of the reasons why the military issued us a mosquito net for our gear because they knew that we would just spend all night long swatting mosquitoes in high uh, density population areas where there were lots of mosquitoes there. So fortunately, you don't have to carry a gigantic mosquito net with you to get the benefit of keeping the mosquitoes away from you. In fact, one of our fellow warriors, Jacob from Louisiana, submitted a video tip to us at our website at warriorlifetips.com where you can go ahead and get his tip now for a way to go ultra light with keeping the mosquitoes away and getting a good night's sleep. So go check that out now. And until our next Warrior Life video, this is Jeff Anderson saying prepare, train, and survive.